Hello everyone and welcome back to my efficient design series in Curl Space Program 0.24.2. In the previous episode, the Kraken cruelly took the life of Lem Kerman, or at least he's missing in action. Uh, we had a glitch where everything went black and I'm not entirely sure what happened. Uh, certainly not any mod because this is a stock game, stock series. But uh, we have lost Lem Kerman, and we will continue on, despite the fact that it was uh, no fault of mine that we lost him. He was uh, casually stepping down onto the surface of Bop, getting ready to plant his flag, and unfortunately the game decided that that was not to be. Otherwise, uh, we have quite a long list of Kerbals on our roster, and we plan to make use of them. I think, I think we really need to teach Jewel a lesson or two. The Jewel system has uh, has been unkind to me in various ways, so I'm going to look into that. But first, let's go over to Mission Control to see what kind of missions we have available to us. So, science data from Space Run Minmus, don't care. Uh, plant a flag on Bop. Ha! Well, I think we'll have to challenge that. Uh, science day from space around the moon, don't care. Uh, plant a flag on Tylo, I think we have to do that soon. That's gonna happen. Okay, that's it as far as uh, jewel stuff is concerned. Maybe if we... Uh, they're really insistent on Minmus. And that Mark 16 parachute. That, Will they get rid of it if I do it? But it's not even worth it. That's worth a lot of science, but unfortunately it's testing the biggest rocket on an escape trajectory out of Duna, which is not really interesting. Um, let's go to the tech tree. We've got some science. So we're getting pretty close to uh, fill out. I mean, obviously it, all of this stuff costs more, but uh, Basically, as far as the parts I normally use, maybe RTGs, um, small, well, the various probe cores, that could be interesting. These I usually like to use. Well, I think, I think I'm going to unlock very heavy rocketry, actually. Yeah. Yeah, if we're going to teach some planets a lesson, very heavy rocketry is going to be the thing. But uh, I don't know if we're going to have the parts necessary to really make use of them. I really want the modular girder segment, and that's to extend the landing gear, right? I mean, if we're going to, we gotta recover these big rockets. We need to be able to extend the landing gear sufficiently below them so that we can uh, really keep them stable. And that's why I need the modular girder segment. But anyway. Uh, we can make do. Let's see what I can do in the VAB. Okay, I think it is time for a booster test. The question is, can I launch a booster like this, very expensive, and recover it safely? That's all I'm testing. Uh, we're not launching any payload. This is going to be a side booster to something. And so what I need is I need to be able to bring it back uh, to the KSC. Now, in the case of a real launch with a payload, I'm going to be wanting to uh, get the whole thing into orbit and then recover the boosters individually. So that would be the plan. Get some solar panels on. Because uh, if it's going to be hanging out in orbit for a while, it will need some way to recharge its batteries. So, uh, you can see it's 130,000 funds, and uh, it's heavy, obviously, and in fact, these modular girder segments that we have here, they're each 0.125, which means that's a lot of mass just in those girder segments sitting there, uh, probably around 3 tons, and then, not, and then there's the landing gear and everything else. Um, yeah, this is uh, quite a quite a booster here. Well, let's find out if it works. Now, it's probably got too much fuel. Uh, this this is, by the way, the benefit of having quite a big budget. Um, anyway, it's probably got too much fuel as it is. 
but uh, we'll find ways of burning that off before bringing it down. Okay, let's go. This is, I mean, I haven't used these parts very much at all, uh, obviously, in doing my series. By the time I get to this part of the tech tree, I've done most of the things, so... But uh, this time, this time we're going to take Jewel seriously, and we're going to we're going to attack it with uh, serious effort. Now you notice for a booster it doesn't have very high thrust weight ratio, and uh, the idea is that it'll actually fuel crossfeed into a center stack, which also has its engines. So the center the center portion will have the payload and, and an engine but not much fuel. It'll draw fuel from the side boosters. Doesn't seem like there'll be much spare fuel for that though. Not the best engine on the planet here. But the real question now is really can we bring something this big back? And for how much? That's what the test is all about. Okay, roughly 100 kilometer orbit. Took an extra 10 tons just to get into orbit there. So it's, we're down to 67.8 tons. Let's see how much delta V we've got left in this. I think we've got 1,227 meters per second left. Which is quite a lot. So I'm actually going to boost up a little bit and then uh, bring it back down again. Let's say go to 300 more. Okay. Uh, that puts us in a little bit of a lower orbit. Let me get a little bit higher just so that we can do a proper test with it. Okay. I think that'll be a fine trajectory to hit. According to my tests, that uh, should be good to hit the KSC from this altitude. Looks like a slightly below nominal trajectory. We're very heavy. We're 55.5 tons on only 24 parachutes. Or 25, sorry. We've got the one on the top there. We do have some fuel to slow our descent if necessary. Well, better to be low than uh, hit the ocean. I'd rather not try this on water. They'll definitely tip over and then break apart. This is less likely to work if we don't hit the KSC because, of course, the ground is not smooth. And then there's still a possibility of this thing tipping over. But let's see what kind of velocity we get after the full parachute deployment. 8.6 is not bad. I'll definitely be using the engine to slow us down a little bit, though I'll have to be careful because this engine is quite powerful. Oh, 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 no, 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 come on, ah, ah, well, probe core is still there, we'll recover the rest of the pieces as well, so I'm gonna have to say that that's not uh, particularly, I mean, if we hit the KSC exactly, maybe we could do it, but I'm, I'm not seeing that as a, uh, immediate possibility without a little bit more refinement to the trajectory planning. So uh, booster debris it's just the, these are probably the launch clamps anyway. Okay so next thing I want to do well let's go to VAB. Okay and so here we are and this is the 10k probe it is called that because the lander plus the transit stage combined 
uh, gets a total of 10,000 delta V, 10,000 meters per second, and that's because, of course, I've got the atomic rocket motor here, the LVN, and I am aware that I have an LVN stage in orbit, but um, if we were try to try to dock with it, it would add so much weight to the probe itself because we have to have the docking port, the RCS and all that, assuming I don't want to take the time to try and maneuver it into a docking without RCS, um, that it wouldn't be worth it. So we might as well just bring this up with us. So yeah, 10K probe, and we're gonna send it over to the Joule system, uh, primarily to investigate the moons that we haven't done yet. In this case, uh, so Paul, Val, and then Tylo, and it is uh, Tylo that we are going to try to land on. So that's the goal with all the Delta V that we have here. Um, I don't know if, uh, now obviously we're not going to be planting a flag or anything, but we're going to do basic science. Uh, unfortunately, we, we have totally the wrong uh, contracts, though maybe we can do some flybys of places like uh, Leith uh, so that we can... Uh, get some uh, some uh, contract fulfillment out of that but yeah we're going to be bringing the the OVX back down so this is the standard OVX stage which we've practiced landing with so hopefully it'll be all right okay I think that uh, that's about it let's uh, get this underway so that we can get some science out of the dual system show that uh, it cannot deter us out to launch pad now obviously I have to line up with Jules, so there's going to be some time warping here. Otherwise we're not going to be at the right phase angle. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and focus on getting some science out of the Jules system in order to unlock the technologies we need to do a grand voyage of some kind. So we're going to be trying to... The next time we send Kerbals over, we're going to send them over in style so that they don't uh, they're not going to be they're not going to be landing in a tiny little uh, mark 1 pod no we're not going to be doing that anymore and uh, if uh, the game glitches out uh, we'll have backup ready and waiting okay so uh, here we go with this so that we can get into bigger and better things off we go So yeah, the thing about the NTS, the nuclear transfer stage, is if the payload is too small, then adding all the RCS and the docking port and all that is a little bit cumbersome, and actually it kills the delta V of the probe. On the other hand, uh, if the payload is too large, then of course the nuclear transfer stage doesn't have much delta V. It doesn't have the thrust, first of all, and it really doesn't have the delta V to help it out. So you really need a payload that's sort of in the sweet spot between the two, two opposites. Uh, some sort of payload that is not too big and not too small. So that's, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is uh, I want to return the launch stage back to the KSC. So I really don't want much inclination and I guess I can get rid of some of it here okay that's good enough let's shut this one down because we are not going to be using it anymore release the payload Payload goes off. Let's get its uh, solar panels out before we do anything else. Okay. Now the launch stage can be returned. Let's see about that. I'd like it in a more circular orbit just so the calculations work out better. And also we're a little bit overweight. We've got a little bit more fuel than we really need. Okay, that looks like 30 kilometers to me. So, periapsis 30 kilometers. 
And now let's see if that gets us to the KSC properly or not. I think we're coming in a bit high, but that's easier to deal with than coming in low. means you have extra energy and you just need to find a way to get rid of it. Okay, now I'm going to try and release the parachutes as soon as possible. As soon as they'll condescend to do that. Now, this has been tested for splashdown and it seems to splash down alright. Well, at least we seem to be within 10 kilometers of the target. Okay, seems to be floating fine. Recover vessel. Okay, so all that should have been uh, recovered just fine. Let's go on with the main mission. Okay, so I've got plot uh, 1,926 meters per second over on the Kerbin side, and then at the ascending node we've got 373 in order to get a uh, dual periapsis of 20,000 kilometers and a possible Tylo encounter. Uh, we could get closer than the 20,000 kilometers, but um, the Tylo encounter might be complicating things, so I'll just leave it be. It's pretty close as it is. And of course, you know, nuclear stage and all that. Actually, that's interesting. Uh, we burned a little bit off, of course, but uh, it seems like we actually got closer to Jewel. That's funny. Obviously, this maneuver is going to have to be replotted. Yeah, I guess we might as well go for it. So, uh, Jew periapsis of 1,400, let's say. That's what I'm aiming for here. And it's a hefty mid-course plane change, but... But it seems like the thing to do to get close to Jewel. This probe is not going to see Kerbin again. Have we gotten measurements from out here yet? I don't... I think we've done gravioli from out here at least. Let's check the temperature. All we can do is uh, these small instruments. We didn't bring the goo container or anything like that. And it seems like we've done it before. 3.5 I'm not going to bother with. I think we can take it in at that altitude. We can make further adjustments in the Joule system. Alright, so on we go to Joule. Alright, here we are in the Joule system. We have uh, quite a bit of inclination to us, so we need to fix that up right away. Because we're not going to hit any moons like this. We are going in the correct direction, though, at least. So, going in a counterclockwise direction but we want to come in a little bit more like that that looks about right though if it looks about right that doesn't really mean anything once Jewel slows us down it'll change things quite a lot and we do want to air a break Trying to get close to... Okay, that looks about right. That doesn't. Okay, let's do this inclination adjustment first. It's about as good as we can get it. Okay, well, that's better. Alright, air braking calculator. Okay, it's giving me 116,934. Okay, that's about right. Okay, arrow breaking time. Well, it's actually a little bit low. That's a little bit high, darn it. Oh, well, I'll take high. Um, I was aiming at uh, Val, but maybe we'll end up with uh, Tylo or something like that. Okay. Let's just go for it. Let's 
make sure we're hitting the right altitude here. Well, it's a safe altitude anyway. Hopefully it'll produce enough drag to slow us down into orbit. So I'm really focusing on uh, Val and Tylo this time. And I want to get some science around Val and then transfer over to Tylo and then make my very first ever landing on Tylo. That's the goal. Okay, we have orbit. The first target will be Val, so that's what I'm going for here. We just need to swing by Val and preferably get a little boost over to Tylo, though we have the nuclear stage, so it's like not really pressing. We could uh, we could slow ourselves down or boost ourselves to any sort of orbit we like. Really, this this probe is more meant for Moho or something like that. We haven't been to Moho in this series. Probably should do that, but I haven't picked up a contract for it yet. Nobody seems to want to explore Moho. There, that's that's all I really want to do. Maybe extend the encounter for a little bit of time. All right, I'll, I think we'll line up for this curious lathe encounter. Let's go over there. Oh yeah, we we had to do some science around Jewel, didn't we? Transmit or recover scientific data from space around Jewel. Well, let's do that. Seems like we didn't fulfill that contract somehow. Okay, uh... Oh, lights on, yeah. That'll help. Nope, can't do that one. Just a gravioli then. Okay, transmit that. Okay, that should be contract fulfilled there. Oh, and another one here, wow. Double contract fulfillment. Oh, we've got a lathe contract here. Okay, so uh, we'll we'll swing by lathe as we're as we're currently aiming to do here. Oh, I've got one of those squiggly line encounters. That's funny. Only the second time I've seen one of these. Okay, we don't have any contracts with for Val, so I'm not going to try and swing too close to it. I'm gonna preserve the lathe encounter so we can uh, get that contract done, but we will get some science out of this. We'll wait until we get a landing contract in order to do the rest of the science though. Let's see, uh, can we do a thermometer reading here? No. And there's no point at all trying to test a barometer. Okay. So that's it for the Val encounter. Let's go out to Leif. We might get a second Val encounter depending on how Leif treats us. Okay, so what's Leif doing to us? Uh, crash course with, uh, well no, not crash course. Actually it's got us in a okay jewel orbit, but that's not uh, really what I want. Okay, that looks like a good boost from Leif. Uh, inclinations a bit off. I could fix that. Now, what is it that we haven't done in the sphere of influence of Lathe? Probably we've done everything already. 
Let's see, log gravity data. Well, we've got 8.6 science left to do here, so let's transmit that anyway. That'll fulfill the contract. Okay, that's done. Probably we're too high up for a temperature scan, then we'll stay high up. Okay, so the next thing to do is to figure out the Tylo encounter. Or shall we... The surface of Bob. We could fulfill that contract if we wanted to go all the way like that, but then then I don't think we'll be able to make a Tylo encounter like that because we won't have enough Delta V on the lander stage to really land on Tylo. But the contract doesn't require well I really I really set my heart out on on landing on Tylo, so that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna have to go around and see when to really encounter Tylo. Yeah, let's go around once. Okay, now this that's that's a little bit closer. I think I can fix that up. The other situation was a bit too far off. Yeah, there's there's an encounter. I don't like where the ascending node and descending node are. Gonna just do... I'll, I'll do most of it here, but uh, the rest has to be done at periapsis, I think. Just a matter of slowing down. And maybe have to do an inclination change, even though it's close to Joule. Don't like doing that, but... costs more for an inclination change it costs more when you're closer to a large gravitating body for uh, for a prograde or retrograde burn it costs less okay I'll fine-tune the rest as we go around I have to drop my orbit down otherwise uh, if we approach Tylo like this I'm gonna be going way too fast so, I'm going to have to adjust at uh, periapsis anyway. So, no point doing more of a burn here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. Why are you going down there anyway? This should have been a straight retro burn. Okay, this this maneuver is going to cost us a bundle, but uh, we've got that bundle. We've got the nuclear stage for a reason, and that's because I wanted to force the issue and make sure that I could do everything I needed to to get a landing on Tylo. Okay, that's a fine approach to Tylo. Let's go. Okay, well, uh, let's go lights off on this. Uh, unfortunately, Joule is covering up the sun, and we're losing electric power. Okay. Wonder does the nuke replenish electric charge? Let me just Yeah it does sorta. Okay. Trying to wait out the eclipse, but it doesn't seem to be Jules not really budging. So let's try a different sort of maneuver. Let me try and get closer to Jewel, uh, not Jewel, uh, Tylo, and thereby get some electric charge as well. 
Okay, that should be nice and close to Tylo. And we've got some electric charge back. Okay, that's as close to running out of charge as I care to come. Up oh, finally the sun. Good, good. Let's not overheat. And well, once we get a little bit more, we can do some science. Let's get the lights on. Okay, in space high. Gotta wait until I have 300 electric charge. Oh, something's happened to my little maneuver node thing. Oh. Oh, when I hover over this for some reason. Okay, we're getting a little bit too close to Tylo on the periapsis side. Let's wait a bit. I somehow did this early. I didn't think I did, but... Okay. Okay, that's a pretty tight orbit around Tylo. Now, we should be still low over it, aren't we? Yeah, near Tylo. Okay, uh, transmit this data. Let's see. Thermometer. Okay, we can transmit that as well. Okay, program at your leisure. Please transmit that data as well. It's, it's going to start right when I do this, but I guess I'll do it anyway. Or maybe it wouldn't, I don't know. But yeah, okay, yeah. It doubled it, it. Okay, so now, plotting a landing on this place. I guess around here we'll do. Well, actually, probably it'll be around here. We got a lot of retro burning to do. If you take a look at the total velocity, we've got to burn off. Okay, here we go for retro burn. That always gives a kick. Well, looks like we're coming down around there or here or somewhere. Wherever this ends. Looks reasonably smooth. Okay, that's the end of the nuclear stage. Or atomic if you'd like. This stage has a lot more thrust to weight ratio. We don't need to be going too fast with it, I think. Where are we? Well, maybe we do. We're coming in pretty sharply. There's no atmosphere on Tylo, so we won't get a atmospheric reading here. I think it's okay to retract solar panels now. Keep everything nice and tight within the base of the lander legs. You might wonder why I put the nose cone. Well, first of all, of course, this was the top of the rocket, but this is the lightest piece that could serve that purpose. It's only 0 0.03 tons. I don't really know how high the terrain is, so I'm being overly cautious and hopeful that my excessive amounts of delta V in this whole system will serve me well. Still not seeing my shadow. I don't have any downward facing lights, so that's uh, one little problem. Got 
Gotta respect Tylo's gravity here. It's gonna suck you right in. And the fact that I'm, of course, running out of fuel. And then there's the fact that the terrain is a little bit uh, deceptive. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. Sheesh. Alright, we're on the surface of Tylo. First time I've ever landed on Tylo. And we are going to log temperature. We're definitely not going off of the surface now. Should get the solar panels back out. Okay, that's sent. Log gravity data. Send that. Does Tylo have an atmosphere? Well, no, but, you know, that would be important information to convey. But anyway, a seismic scan from Tylo's surface, very important. And there we go. Okay, so our mission is complete. We uh, nabbed quite a lot of science, certainly enough to unlock one of those 550 science uh, technologies. Uh, got lots and lots of funds you can see here we're almost up to five million now because we filled all those contracts to do with Jewel except for the BOP one of course uh, we've got plan a flag on BOP and we need to do some transmitter recover scientific data from BOP but otherwise we fulfilled all the Jewel contracts this explore Jewel Tylo lathe unfortunately we didn't have a valid oh well, we still have a plant a flag on Tylo that's gonna be a tough one all right, so, uh, but on that note, uh, thank you for watching this successful mission to the Jewel system. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave the them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.